Live bait is critical in this and understanding how to pinpoint it, how to target it, how to catch it, making sure that it's fresh, making sure that it stays fresh in the boat. Having live well systems like our CV that just has great water flow and understanding how much water flow you're supposed to have. You don't want to overdo it for them, you don't want to underdo it for the fish. It's really important to understand that live bait so that it stays fresh as long as it possibly can. A fresh bait out there is a very tempting to a king mackerel. If they get outside of the school a little bit, bait is, that's their protection, is a, is a school of fish. If we present something to them, it's outside of it a little bit, a little bit outside of the normal, but it looks natural, that's when the strike oftentimes occurs. fishing this uh, this weekend. Uh, today is the Fall Brawl King Mackerel Tournament and um, we're out here looking for bait and fog so a lot of fun but we'll see what happens this day. You know the fog was thick and um, you know it was it was you know, this time of year it can be tough the bait can be everywhere it can be nowhere and um, you know it could be on the beach and we just weren't sure we hadn't had a whole lot of time to research and find out but based on history and the things that the my sons have been able to do with the charter fishing and just the history of tournament fishing we know where some bait could be and maybe should be so in the fog it was hard it was uh, it was dangerous so we're thankful to have you know the radar and all the uh the technology that we had with the series xm weather um all of those things but long and short of it we went to a spot where we felt like bait should be and again joshua and crockett can see just about anything and and they saw one real quick flip joshua threw the net pancaked it caught plenty of bait we were off and uh, you know pretty fortunate there and uh, not always like that but uh, it was uh, it was on this event and you know so the bait wasn't the concern we're out ready to go fishing choosing our spot and see what we can find um, summertime it's not uncommon at all to catch three or four hundred in a net and have to throw a bunch back but later in the year they get more scattered and run in smaller schools so to take a lot more work uh, well now we're going to run out of Bug Inlet and we're going to head about 20 miles to the south where we heard there were some fish being caught over the last few days and we're going to give that a shot to start with. We picked an area uh, coming out of, uh, of our inlet here, running south, because we're right at the uh, northern boundary line, so we needed to fish south on this, and we know where fish can hold uh, during this time of year. And we saw a lot of birds, we were running through the fog, it was real swelly, so it um, took a little while to get to where we wanted to fish. And, you know, we saw it looked real fishy. It was good bait, um, but it was hard to see other boats around and that kind of thing. But I uh, saw a lot of birds, a lot of gulls um, that were, that were you know, picking up little pieces of bait that uh, Spanish mackerel and bluefish were out there. So it looked really good. We got one bite uh, and then uh, bait cut in half. It was a little frustrating, but we fished a couple of different spots that were fairly close in, um, you know, in 40, 45 feet of water. And, um, you know, even in toward the piers, you know, and trying to get in there because this time of year, some of those big cow uh, kingfish, so those females get in there. And you know, all you gotta do is get the right bite. You know, it's not gonna be necessarily the bite that we might experience up in Hatteras, a huge fish often, you know, catching 30 fish a day. This might be a one or two fish day. And uh, that's what we're looking for in this event.
What's my secret? Sirius XM marine fish mapping. The secret's out. Try Sirius XM marine fish mapping today. Taco Marine's Troll the Edge is brought to you by Taco Marine, Troll the Edge. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Andro's Boat Works, the chosen boat for liquid fire fishing. The thing about king mackerel fishing is where do you go? You know, what gives you the best opportunity to catch fish? And, and you know, we had given our chance, ourselves a chance um, at, the, at some spots right, hey, look right close to the beach, close to some piers. We tried a couple of different spots, had a little bit of information from some, some people that fish were being caught. There was quite a few boats around. Didn't see a lot of activity. Saw a couple of fish being caught, but it just didn't quite feel right. And, you know, Crockett and Joshua were talking about a, a, a location uh, about 45 miles away further south and we had to really kind of make a decision, hey, do we want to do that? Because we had gotten out into the middle of the day. We felt like we needed to give it our best chance through a bite time. It just didn't happen for us. So, you know, we were talking about it for a few minutes and, and finally, you know, we just made a really uh, uh, collective decision. Hey, let's do it. Let's go. We can get there. We can run about 40 miles an hour. It's going to take a little over an hour to, to, to get there. And, um, you know, it was, it was, you know, we weren't real sure, but we're glad we did because once we got there, fishing turned on pretty well. There were a couple other boats around, not a lot, but a few. And, um, you know, it was really nice to see that first strike it hit. I think we had a double, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we, caught, we caught one fish, put it in the boat. It was about 18 pounds. The next one was a 21, 22 pounder. So that put us to where we knew we had to run to weigh the fish all the way down to Ocean Isle at that point, which was another long run. It was 45, 50 miles from there. And, um, it, it, but it put us to where we knew we had to have a good fish right in about that range to make sure that we were able to qualify and fish for the championship of the Kingfish Cup. This turned out to be a really, really good move for us. You know, it doesn't always pay off like that, but it did this time. We really were struggling in the day. Had that one bite early on, made the move, and we got there, we caught those two fish, we put baits right out. I was putting the bluefish out, and uh, boom, a 34 pound kingfish skied on it and hooked up. I handed the rod to Crockett, he fought it, we put it in the box, and we knew then that we had a really good fish for this event. As the angler, my job is to get every fish that we hook up to into the boat. There's a lot of big fish that are going to be caught this weekend, and you got to make them count. the Kingfish Cup series, you have to have a hand signal for the fish as soon as you get it in the boat. Uh, before the fish is dead, you have to take a picture of it. And the signal for this one, uh, the little kid that uh, came up with it and touching your nose was the signal. Yeah, was, after we get a fish like that kind of late in the day, uh, we got about another 15 minutes that we can fish and then if we don't head in, we won't make it to the weigh-in in time. Catch a big fish late like that, you gotta get on it and uh, you know find the best path back to the skills the least amount of time. Did you see it come across like that? And we had another double hookup. The uh, downrigger pop uh, hooked up with that one. And then I looked up and I saw the bluefish on the short line. I saw the fish uh, eat the bait. And uh, Madison grabbed that rod, fed it back to the fish, hooked up. Um, my fish pulled off pretty quick. It was a small team, probably around 15 pounds. Um, but uh, finally, we got on top of Mad Madison's fish, and got a really good look at it, and see that it was a really decent fish. Uh, it was hard to tell if it was any bigger than the one that we had in the boat or not. 
Uh, we got a nice fish on. Um, it is 355, and we've got to be running by four o'clock. So this is uh, it's pretty pretty nerve wracking here. Um, but that's part of King Mackerel fishing. You just never know. That's why you keep the baits in the water as long as you can. And uh, you know, we're probably gonna have to move forward. I've got two in. Uh, probably got to a. Uh, too right. Um, we'll probably have to put a little more pressure on this fish, and more than we normally want to. We've got small hooks uh, and uh, heavy drag. You can pull the hook in a heartbeat on these uh, soft fish, but it's not in its mouth. I think it is. Nothing. Coming back. Coming back right here. You can't tell. It's four o'clock. Put it on him, Madison. Don't gun it, though. Do not gun it. Just in reverse. To reverse. There you go. All right. That's a good fish. I think we boated the fish at 4.02 and we decided that our cutoff was 4 o'clock that we needed to, to get to weigh in in time. So we had to we had to push it to get to the scales in time, but it ended up being a good decision. Her fish was uh, a little over a pound heavier than the one that I had just caught. So it ended up, uh, ended up winning us a little bit more money with that one. Uh, finally got in the scales to actually uh, get a look at the fish and see how big it is. Uh, looks like it's probably around 35 pounds, a lot bigger than we thought. So uh, feeling all right right now. Wow, what a few days of fishing. Holy smokes. Um, Hatteras two days down here on, in uh, Onslow Bay. Uh, two 34, five pound fish right at the end of the day. My God, King Michael fishing at its best. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very frustrating sometimes. Lost a monster fish yesterday. But you know what? That's part of it. And uh, we came out, we had a good time. And uh, you know, it's exciting to be here with the kids and family and, and Madison joining the team. And, uh, oh, good. It's exciting. So here we are at weigh-in again, and we're south. We're a long way from home. We're about two and a half hours from my home, and and so we call Audrey, and you know what? She went into uh, went into little general mode, man. I got to tell you, she's driving the dually. She's bringing the trailer down right by herself. She's uh, pretty fantastic. So it's pretty cool. She got there. We weighed this cool fish. It wound up doing some some good for us. Won a little bit of money, and uh, just the experience of it was was exciting because of everything that was going on that weekend with all the tournaments, the Lady Angler at Madison doing a great job. Um, you know, it, it's, it was pretty neat. The whole family uh, whole family aspect of it really played into uh, what was going on in, in this weekend. Coastal Kia is home of the truly exceptional experience. That means car buying is fast and simple. So if you're looking for an SUV, Kia has many choices, from small to large. And you can just sign and drive. Click, call, or stop on in. At Coastal Power Sports, it's all about having fun. Cruise the beach in one of our street legal golf carts. You'll find ATVs for work or play. We make fun affordable with zero down options. Coastal Power Sports, next door to Kia. Purpose built boats. Driven by the chase. Designed to go anywhere and do anything.
we're gonna be going offshore fishing for wahoo, dolphin, sailfish, a lot of cool bottom fish with our liquid fire sport fishing. All right, we're about 65 miles out of Bug Inlet at the northeast corner of the Big Rock. We're gonna start out in about, uh, about 200 feet of water and just kind of work out between there to 350 and see if we can find out where some bait's holding and where some wahoo might be. We're gonna start the day trolling for wahoo, see if we can't get lucky on one or two of them and then might do a little bottom fishing for some red porgy or some trigger fish a little later on. Right there, touch the wire, touch the wire. All right, release. All right, so let's stand up. Both sides gave us a great fight, a lot of fun. Crockett did a great job angling. Joshua did a wonderful job keeping it on the fish. We started pretty fish with good size one too. That's it. A lot of fun. Feels good. Biting on my fingers a little bit. See the uh, see the sail just split a little bit. Gorgeous fish. All right, so we're going to let him go. I think All he's right. good. There she goes. Feels good. All right. So, when it initially hit, it popped it out of the outrigger clip, and I started feeding it back, and I could feel the bill, the, uh, bill hit the bait. And I just fed it back until it finally ate it, and uh, hooked up and put on a show right at the beginning. I uh, made several jumps. Um, peeled a lot of line off, but uh, fish still had plenty of energy when we got it to the boat and got a nice clean release. You know, my sons are really, really good fishermen. I've mentioned that, and, and it's exciting to see them care so much about the charters that hire them to take them offshore. If they go out and fish for wahoo or sailfish or uh, mahi, it's really important that they put a, the customer in the opportunity to have an exciting day, put meat on in the box, make sure that they go home with all the things that they had with the experience for fun, exciting, fight the fish, you get to be able to eat the fish. And you know, the, the knowledge that they gained over the years from water temperatures, uh, bait, where it is in the water column, how to make presentation, it's really important and they've done a great job of making sure that their clients have a lot of fun on the water. They, you know, they get a lot of return business. The customers really enjoy it. They like teaching them. They're kind to them. That means a lot when you're out there and you spend a lot of money to having somebody take you offshore. It's really good to have somebody care about what they're doing so that you learn and have a good time. For more than 36 years, Ameritrail has manufactured trailers for all types of boats. Whether it's a single axle trailer for a 16 foot skiff, or a mammoth quad axle trailer for a 50 foot plus catamaran, Ameritrail has the knowledge, manpower, and facilities to do the job right the first time. Ameritrail prides itself when ending a great day on the water with a perfect loading trailer and a safe trip home. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Taco Marines Troll the Edge is brought to you by Sirius XM Marine for fish mapping and all of your offshore weather data. Coastal Kia, home of the truly exceptional experience. FXR, conquer the outdoors. Oh! Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some water? I think 
sir. By the end of the season, uh, a lot of the teams, especially the ones that fish as many tournaments as we do, they're kind of burned out. They're, they're ready for the season to end, ready to have a break. But come December, they're already thinking about the next year. They're talking about what are we going to fish next year. They're watching the, the websites of the tournaments to see when they announce their dates. And so they're, they're already by December they're already for the next season to start. It's just an addictive sport. 